welcome to People in Power. I'm Juliana Rufus. On today's programme, Mexico's next oil disaster. We predicted uh, that deep, deep water horizon would happen. Uh, and of course, Mexican Gulf, Mexico is 10, 20 times worse. So it, it had to happen and it will happen again. One year ago this month in the Gulf of Mexico, an explosion on the Deepwater Horizon oil platform cost the lives of 11 men. It also caused the largest marine oil spill in history and wrought havoc on the southern coastline of the United States. The political fallout was considerable and the battle over responsibility and compensation will drag on for years. But the disaster also gave rise to much debate about the human and environmental costs of oil production, especially in offshore waters. The argument has become particularly heated in the country from which the Gulf draws its name. Mexico is a major oil producer and the huge profits from Pemex, the state-owned oil company, have long underpinned the country's economy. Now, with some of its most productive inshore fields beginning to run dry, Pemex is pushing exploration out into ever deeper waters. And that, say many activists, is worrying because the company's safety and environmental record is not as good as it should be. Filmmaker David Brown has been finding out what's got them so concerned. October the 23rd, 2007, and the giant Usa Macinta oil platform lay crippled in heavy seas in the Gulf of Mexico. The offshore rig had been battered by huge waves and winds of 100 kilometers an hour. A major oil disaster was unfolding three years before British Petroleum's infamous Deepwater Horizon blowout in these same waters. 23 crew members died in the Usamacinta disaster and the resultant oil spill caused widespread environmental devastation. But to long-standing critics of Mexico's oil industry, it came as no surprise. Yo no lo llamaría accidente. Eh, lo llamaría como un, como un efecto de la corrupción. Porque se trata de una plataforma que era prácticamente chatarra, que no tenía las condiciones ni de seguridad, eh, ni la infraestructura era apta para eh, operar. The Usamacinta rig was being operated by Mexico's state-owned oil giant, Pemex. Valued at $500 billion, the company is the 11th largest in the world and currently produces around 2.5 million barrels of oil a day. Its wealth, which underpins the Mexican economy, comes mostly from the offshore Cantarell field in the Campeche Basin. Around 85% of this black gold is exported to the United States. Nationalized by President Lazaro Cardenas in 1938, the company was to be owned by the people for the people. It's enjoyed legal monopoly over oil ever since. But critics say the 2007 disaster was a clear indication that Pemex has been putting profits well before people. Si los supervisores de petróleos mexicanos hubieran hecho el checklist como correspondía, la plataforma Usumacinta no podía operar en la sonda de Campeche, pero se permitió operar. De hecho, eh, yo obtuve el checklist de esta plataforma y hablaba de todas las deficiencias, cosas tan básicas como que no tenía eh, suficientes sistemas de detección de gases y no tenía eh, las alarmas, por ejemplo, y las mandarinas o los botes salvavidas estaban en malas condiciones. Award-winning writer and campaigner Ana Lilia Perez has been investigating the Mexican oil and gas industry for over a decade. She believes the Usamacinta incident and other long-standing problems with Pemex are indicators of yet more serious disasters to come. Claro, en cualquier momento puede ocurrir. Me parece que sus prácticas ni tampoco cumplan eh, cabalmente con los protocolos de seguridad, lo cual es un foco rojo que en cualquier momento puede detonar en un nueve, nuevo accidente. By any measure, the company has a troubled history. 
In June 1979, Pemex's Ixtoc-1 platform in the Bay of Campeche was hit by a catastrophic explosion and a huge oil spill that poured 140 million gallons of crude into the sea. In November 1984, a blast at a Pemex liquid petroleum gas plant in Mexico City killed 511 people. In April 1992, 293 people died when fuel from a Pemex depot in Guadalajara leaked into the sewer system and blew up parts of the city center. And last December, a pipeline blast in San Martin, Texmelucan, killed 28 people. It's thought the accident was caused when oil thieves breached the pipeline. It's a common occurrence. According to a recent report of the Mexican Senate, there were nearly 400 breaches in the company's aging pipeline network in 2008. These often result in damaging oil spills. On land, the effects of contamination are not hard to find. These are the Sentla wetlands, a World Heritage Site in Tabasco State in Mexico's oil-producing heartland. Local people say the area has been devastated by pollution. Aquí toda esta área está muy contaminado por lo que es Pemex en este caso. Todos los alrededores aquí y bueno, serían dos opiniones porque en lo que es así como dice económicamente, pues sí genera mucho trabajo y, y dinero. Pero lo que es el impacto ambiental, la verdad sí está acabando mucho con todo lo que es aquí. Todo lo que es alrededor de, de la venta, todos los pantanos están este en lo que puede haber, puede, se puede ver en los pantanos que hay mucho muchas tuberías y muchas trampas y muchos por acá están haciendo muchas otras cosas más así. Pues la verdad es malo. Some miles away in Cunduacan, Ana Lilia Perez takes us to meet Efrain Rodriguez León, legal advisor of the Tabasco Human Rights Committee. He wants her to investigate the alleged dumping of 40,000 tons of toxic drilling mud. He too says Pemex are to blame. Directamente del pozo petrolero los trajeron a enterrar acá sin darle ningún tipo de tratamiento. La Procuraduría Federal de Protección al Ambiente, Profepa, eh, hizo un estudio de las muestras y encontró una concentración de más de 8000 partes por millón de hidrocarburos, modalidad diésel, cuando los parámetros permitidos por la norma es solamente eh, hasta 1500 partes por millón. Así es, de hecho, Pemex para librar su responsabilidad deja de hacer esta actividad y se la concesiona a terceras personas para no, no aparecer como el responsable, pero al final de cuentas es Pemex el responsable porque es el que genera este tipo de material. Sí. Ana Leon Escuerdo says oil has poisoned the wells in her village. Mira usted el agua, es agua contaminada, esta agua no sirve, ve, esto, esto no sirve. Está contaminada, es puro aceite, no sirve el agua. Y aquí viene, esto es la contaminación. Este es el aceite. Estamos como a 300 metros donde tiran los, res, los residuos tóxicos. Last year, hundreds of campesino protesters decided to march on the Tabasco state capital, Villa Hermosa. It was the latest in a series of protests against the oil industry. The campesinos want compensation from the company they blame for their misery. De las mismas expectaciones de Pemex de los pozos, donde queman desperdicio, es el que nos está molestando ahorita. Esta agua está infectado. Hasta los animales de plumas se están muriendo porque beben esta agua. Uh, ella tiene tiempo que las frutas se están muriendo y Pemex no ha reconocido, pero ni un grano de arena ha dado. Aquí con los pobres nosotros que estamos The region's inshore fishermen are also up in arms. The coastal waters off Tabasco State used to be teeming with life, but oil exploration has hit the industry hard. Y como le como le vuelvo a decir, este detonaban dinamita y y el pescado se, se espanta, se espanta, se, se va mar adentro. 
y, y a veces también que, que recala el, el chapapote. El chapapote lo que hace es se impregna en la red y, y yo siento que, que tanto Pemex y como, como pescador, los dos podemos vivir en el mismo espacio. Nosotros no le afectamos nada en, en, que, en que nos acerquemos, nosotros llegamos a, a hacer nuestra labor. Para nosotros sería mejor que no estuviera Pemex, no por, porque la verdad no hay trabajo, no hay nada de desarrollo en la comunidad. Ellos entran, traen gente de otro lado y trabajan ellos solos. A la comunidad no la toman en cuenta ni en empleo, ni en obras a, de infraestructura, como dicen ellos. Es imposible parar a Pemex, porque ya buscaron que ahí es una mina de oro y ahí lo van a estar buscando siempre. Pero nosotros en el pueblo viviríamos mejor sin Pemex que con Pemex. Campaigners say that all these problems are compounded because of the controversial role now being played by foreign subcontractors in the Mexican oil industry. They point out to Article 27 of the Mexican Constitution, which says that subsoil hydrocarbons are the monopoly of the state. For Ana Lilia Perez and others, it means only Pemex should have the right to explore and drill for oil and gas. Hemos visto que en los últimos años se está violando la ley porque son las compañías privadas y compañías extranjeras como la que vemos acá, que es una compañía de Estados Unidos la que está perforando los pozos. La Constitución dice que solo Petróleos Mexicanos puede perforar sus pozos. La gente que vive en estas casas debía ser reubicada para que no esté en riesgo. Ellos están en una bomba de tiempo, porque la perforación de un pozo implica, eh, además de las vibraciones que se hacen, es la emisión de muchos contaminantes. Y la gente, los niños, están expuestos a, todo, a, a todas esas sustancias tóxicas. We contacted Pemex and asked to interview a company spokesman about the oil pollution problems throughout Tabasco State and their use of foreign subcontractors. We later wrote to the company, detailing the specific claims made by activists and suggesting that the company respond in writing if necessary. Our calls and our correspondence went unanswered. But whatever problems Pemex faces on land, campaigners claim that they could soon be dwarfed by a disaster at sea. The 2010 Deepwater Horizon catastrophe was the largest accidental marine oil spill in history. An explosion on a deep water rig being operated for BP caused the deaths of 11 men and injured 17 others. 205 million gallons of crude oil were released into the Gulf of Mexico off the coastline of the United States. The spill hit marine and wildlife habitats and laid waste to the region's fishing and tourism industries. A multi-billion dollar legal battle over responsibility will continue for years. And I want all Americans to know that I will continue to fight each and every day until the oil is contained, until businesses recover, and until the Gulf Coast bounces back from this tragedy, uh, as I know it will. Yet while U.S. President Obama is turning the screw on BP and other deep water operators, critics of Pemex believe that Mexico's poor pollution record and technical deficiencies could lead to a disaster that would put Deepwater Horizon in the shade. The company's cash cow, the relatively shallow Cantoral field in the Campeche Basin, once the second largest oil field in the world, is gradually running dry. With huge untapped reserves known to exist further offshore, Pemex is now pushing into deeper waters to boost its faltering production. And this month, the company is due to start drilling to 2,600 meters, the deepest that Pemex has ever ventured. Alfredo Hernandez Penalosa worked for Pemex for 23 years as a senior petrochemical engineer. He says Pemex's history makes deep water drilling a matter of grave anxiety. El permitir un desarrollo amplio de actividad ahí va a provocar esas bombas de tiempo, va a provocar condiciones inseguras en la actividad. Porque no hay vigilancia, no hay control 
de las actividades en, en mar abierto. Other industry insiders agree. They say Pemex will have to rely on specialist subcontractors to operate the rigs. But that will only happen if the company improves its safety record. They don't have the technology. The only way that will happen is to invite uh, outside uh, contenders or contractors to come in to drill and explorate uh, for oil and gas. Those companies will not come in unless they the Mexican government and Pemex agree to apply world-class standards uh, from start to finish. There is some evidence to support these concerns. This is the ocean new era, seen in footage gathered by activists last year. According to the Mexican government, the rig was working in the Gulf of Mexico until August 2010. It was being operated by a Pemex subcontractor. We have obtained a copy of a document known as a checklist. A record of an internal safety inspection aboard the rig, carried out by Pemex in October 2007, in the same month as the Usmacinta disaster. The checklist details a number of dangerous deficiencies, or condiciones inseguras, found by inspectors. Sulfide gas, fire, and smoke detection systems were faulty. Vital medical kit was missing. Two of the rig's engineers were unable to present their professional qualifications, and 24 of the crew could not prove they had completed a mandatory offshore safety course. The Ocean New Era was declared no apto, or unfit for service. Yet despite these failings, it operated out at sea for the next three years. In our correspondence to Pemex, we asked about the Ocean New Era. We wanted to know why it had been put into service after failing its checklist safety inspection. The company didn't respond. Nori McVicker of the International Transport Workers Federation, which represents six million workers, isn't surprised. In their own evidence, when we met in the Senate in 2009, they admitted uh, to all who participated that they had carried out one inspection in all of the years the Gulf of Mexico uh, exploration has been going on. They will gamble with the lives and the environment uh, to get oil and gas. But for many of Pemex's critics, Anxieties about pollution and safety have their roots in the company's failure to abide by its founding principles. They point to the company's attitude to its workforce. Although in theory, Pemex has a legal monopoly, the company has been partly privatized in recent years. Currently, more than half of Pemex's work is carried out by foreign-owned private companies. Many of these firms then outsource it to even smaller subcontractors. The end result, say trade unionists, is a system that discriminates between Pemex's full-time employees and the casual workers employed by subcontractors. Aquí no vienen a trabajar y operar como en el extranjero. Aquí vienen a explotar a los trabajadores. Y eso es lo que no puede aceptarse. ¿Por qué esas mismas compañías en el extranjero sí pagan las condiciones de esos países como en Noruega, en Reino Unido, y acá no, acá vienen al revés. The right of workers to join a trade union is supposedly enshrined in Mexican law. But Mexico's leading maritime trade unions claim most of the 35,000 offshore workers who work predominantly for subcontractors are not allowed to join free and authentic trade unions. No respetan el derecho sindical, donde son violados todos los derechos que tienen los trabajadores, no les dan liquidación, no les pagan los viajes. Eh, la gente puede trabajar 28 días y dejar de trabajar mucho tiempo. No hay protección de, 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 la, de la Secretaría de Trabajo, de, no es respetada la ley. Federal de Trabajo Mexicana, no son respetados los acuerdos internacionales que México tiene firmados. Hay una total violación a los derechos sindicales. 
Suidad del Carmen in the Campeche Basin is the hub of Mexico's vast Cantarell offshore oil field. At any given time, there are around 180 oil platforms and 250 supply ships stationed close by. And every day, hundreds of jobless oil workers gather in Carmen's Parque de los Lamentos, the Park of Sorrows. Compañeros de otras compañías que, que, que duermen en, en contenedores de 12, 14 personas ahí y unas condiciones que no realmente no, no, no corresponde a, a las personas que trabajamos directamente para Pemex. El momento de nosotros este, quejarnos de las condiciones en que estamos, enseguida nos bajan porque enseguida nos inventan que si somos conflictivos, que si no queremos laborar que, y muchas cosas. Pemex le paga bien. Pero su contratista nos paga menos a nosotros. Es una mafia que va de cadena en cadena. Es una mafia. And these men say that for those who do hang on to their jobs, the price of working in Mexico's offshore oil industry can be very high. In 2007, the year 23 men died on the Usama disaster, four others were killed in two accidents aboard the Sonora platform currently being refitted in Ciudad del Carmen. And in 2009, a floating hostel for 500 Pemex workers nearly sank after it developed problems with its ballast tank. Accidents do happen, but according to experts in Ciudad del Carmen, safety is routinely compromised because it is too easy for casual workers to obtain fake rig passes showing they have received mandatory safety training. Ha habido muertos, ha habido accidentados, pero no pasa nada. ¿Por qué? Porque las compañías, simple y sencillamente, los contratan a través de contratadoras fantasmas. Ha habido muchas escuelas que se dedican a la venta, a la venta indiscriminada de constancias de participación como si se hubiera tomado el curso. Inclusive engañan al personal diciéndole que mediante el trámite van a obtener una libreta de mar que inclusive les va a servir como pasaporte para viajar al extranjero, lo cual es totalmente falso. Pemex did not respond to our questions about its safety procedures. But on the industry website, Pemex states that, the exception of the Usama Sinta disaster, its accident rate has been falling steadily since the mid-1990s. As the company pushes its exploration and drilling further offshore, many feel this record will be impossible to maintain. We predicted uh, that deep, deep water horizon would happen. Uh, and of course, Mexican Gulf, Mexico is 10, 20 times worse. So it, it had to happen, and it will happen again. Lo cual es un foco rojo que en cualquier momento puede detonar en un nuevo, nuevo accidente. La vida de los trabajadores de la sonda de Campeche eh, parece un juego para eh, las empresas. With oil so crucial to the Mexican economy and to its powerful northern neighbor, exploration in the Gulf is certain to continue, whatever campaigners say. But many here are wondering when the human and environmental costs will be just too great to bear. And that's all for this edition of People in Power. If you'd like to comment on our film or any other matter, we'd love to hear from you on aljazeera.net forward slash English. Until next time, goodbye.